welcome back. Today you're going to get an update on the puppies. This is going to be their eight week update. So um, basically the last one of all of them. You'll probably see them again uh, like in future videos as I go to visit them. So I'm sure you're going to be seeing the puppies again, especially since I know everyone that they're going to. Um, like I was saying, it's all uh, friends and family that are getting the puppies. Some I'll see more often than others. Uh, but I will keep you updated as they do grow. And then, of course, I'm keeping Rowan, Daisy, and Bruce. So you're going to get to see those ones all the time. And I am going to keep doing vlogs after this. So I guess it's just going to be like the regular um, vlogs. Uh, I'll probably just uh, number them, I guess. Um, but this is going to be the last puppy vlog. So today we're going to get to uh, see each one, how much they've grown. And it's just crazy. Like, seeing them every day, it's like, oh, they haven't grown that much. And then seeing the old videos of them just from last week, it's like, wow. <laughs> but first, I do have some announcements, some things that I did want to talk to you guys about. And some of it's uh, good news, I guess, and some of it's bad news. Uh, so first, uh, starting off with the good news, I'm really, really excited to let you guys know that, uh, like I had said, I wanted to spend this year trying to go out and meet you guys in person. So I'm going to be at the Denver Comic Con and the El Paso Comic Con as a guest this year. So if you guys are interested in meeting me at one of those events, all of that information is going to be on my social media accounts. So if you want to check it out on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, I'm super, super excited about being at those events. It's going to be so much fun. And I'm just so excited to be able to meet you guys in person. So I hope I can see a lot of you guys there. Now, the other thing that I wanted to tell you guys is that, um, so Beastie passed away recently, very recently. Um, actually, like right after I had finished filming the last video, um, the last vlog. And it was very unexpected, very upsetting, because she was about five years old, which is like kind of young middle age for a sugar glider um and it, it was definitely too young for her to be passing away from old age so it wasn't that she hadn't been sick at all um so it was just very unexpected just um really caught me off guard i've had some time to process it now and um at first i was so obsessed over not the fact that i didn't understand what had happened that i couldn't even grieve properly and I, I finally got answers. I um, wanted to do a necropsy on her because, um, unlike with my other animals, all of I've lost several pets in 2017. Uh, I know we're already in 2018 now, but in the past year, I've lost a lot of pets, but most of them had been because it was from old age. There was a few that did have certain health conditions, but overall, like it was um, very obvious why they passed away, and this one was just so like out of the blue just it was so unexpected and I'm sorry if there's a lot of noises the puppies are running around playing everywhere uh, so it was really really upsetting and I wanted to you know understand what the cause was um, so it turns out um, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it was a little confusing to myself um, turns out she was having some lung problems that wouldn't really show up um, too much especially since they hide not feeling well so she had uh, small growths that were causing lung lesions on her and that ultimately um, did end up killing her uh, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail just because it was a little confusing for me to understand and I think also just because uh, with these animals there's not a whole lot of information or studies that uh, the vet couldn't provide me with too much information either. Uh, but anyways, it has been really hard dealing with that. Uh, I just, I loved Beastie so much. But the hardest part about all of this has actually been Thea. I mean, it was really devastating and heartbreaking to lose Beastie. And then Thea, um, she's the only sugar glider I have now. She has actually been crying for Beastie every morning. Uh, she just looks depressed when she comes out at night and every morning before she goes to bed she'll sit there like calling for half an hour um, and and then finally just going to bed because you know BC is not showing up and it's so sad it's almost more heartbreaking than having to deal with BC's death because uh, and, you know at least BC's not suffering but Thea's suffering and that has just been really hard to deal with um, so 
This was very unexpected, and as you guys know, sugar gliders are not cheap. So this GoFundMe would be to get Thea a companion, because sugar gliders are colony animals, and she just needs somebody to bond with, so I want to get her introduced to another sugar glider so that she can start forming a relationship with them, and just not be by herself and not feel lonely. So the way that I plan on doing that is, first I am contacting uh, sugar glider rescues. I'm actually already in contact with one of the sugar glider rescues but it is a few states over and so that's the other problem is that I will have to make a trip if I get one from a rescue. Uh, the other option because I don't know yet if they have one available or, or even two I told them you know maybe two if if they're already together and maybe she can be introduced to them um, but ideally I would want one um, so I don't know if that's going to go through, but uh, the other option would be to get one from someone who no longer wants their sugar glider. Basically somebody who doesn't want to care for their sugar glider anymore, and then I would, um, you know, adopt from them. Um, and that would probably be like an owner surrender or, um, you know, buying one that someone's rehoming. Now the very, very last option is a pet store. I don't want to go that route, but... I, I don't want to say I'm 100% against it or I 100% know that that's not going to happen because it, it's so hard. It, it's just been so heartbreaking hearing her cry that, I mean, if I didn't have any other option, I, I, I guess I might go that way. I think if anything, worst case scenario, I could get one from a breeder and that would be better than a pet store because I could find a responsible breeder to get a sugar glider from but um, basically those are my options I think the most realistic one is going to be getting a sugar glider from somebody who doesn't want theirs anymore um, a lot of people to buy only one sugar glider then decide it's too much work and they don't want it anymore and it's not bonded to anyone or or another animal so um, that would probably be a good situation actually so then I do have the GoFundMe and basically that is going to go to the adoption fee of the sugar glider as well as travel costs because I do expect to at least have to go um, a couple hours out of town to get one. If I went through a rescue then it would actually be a lot further. Um, but I kind of set a goal uh, just to estimate kind of. So I set a goal amount that's I think reasonable for an adoption fee and travel costs. It might be more than that, but um, I was just trying to kind of estimate it. Anything you can donate would be greatly appreciated. Any little bit helps, even if you can just donate a dollar to that fund, it would really, really help. And if you can't, or if you you know don't feel like this is something that you wanna to commit to, that's perfectly fine and understandable. I'm just giving you guys this option because I, I'm so depressed about Thea. Uh, so I hope you understand why I'm doing this, uh, why I'm making it available to my subscribers. And if you can um, support it in any way, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I am hoping that with your guys' help, I can get Thea a companion um, quicker than I would be able to if I was doing this on my own. So thank you for listening to my whole story about that. And now let's uh, get to the puppy update. So um, the puppies are eight weeks old. Uh, they're actually going to be eight weeks old tomorrow, but Daisy's actually eight weeks old today because um, she was born earlier. But the rest are all going to be eight weeks old tomorrow. So um, here's an update on them. All right, so first up we have Bruce, and Bruce is the red Merle, the one that I'm keeping. So Bruce is pretty nervous. Um, he's one of the nervous little puppies, and I think he's shaking right now. Bruce, you're a corgi, not a chihuahua. So I used to think that Bruce had like lazy eyes because it looks like they're not open all the way. And it took me a while to realize that Bruce actually has um, multicolored eyes. So the tops of his eyes are brown and the bottom of his eyes are blue. So it actually kind of makes him look like he's sleepy or something. Good boy, good boy, Bruce. And it also took Bruce longer than the rest of the dogs to learn his name, but He's doing pretty good now and he actually does come to it. So he was the last one and now officially all of the puppies know their name. Rowan is the runt of the litter, but I don't think you'd really be able to tell anymore because he's actually about the same size as all the girls. He's not really the smallest anymore. He's actually outgrown Ella and he looks really good. He's not as big as his brothers. Those ones are definitely the biggest ones in the litter, but he's doing really well. 
Now, one thing about Rowan is that he's actually a tri brindle, and that it took me a long time to even realize. Um, in the last update of them, the five week update, someone commented and said, Do you think he's a brindle tri? And I hadn't seen it. I had not seen it until they pointed it out. And see, he has really weird um, markings with the brown on his face. And that finally explained it. So, yeah, that's what he is. So, those of you who were. Um, wishing that I had kept a brindle. I guess I technically did after all. Up next we have Sadie with her perfect markings. So Sadie's actually going to be living out in a very rural area up in the mountains with lots of trees and she's also going to be traveling a lot and she's going to be the only dog in the house which I think is good because um, she likes a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention and doesn't really like the rest of the dogs too much. She's also very shy so I think that she'll be more confident if She's the only dog in the house and she's getting more attention. Now Sparky here has changed so much. As you can see his back has lightened up a lot. Um, he lost all of the black in his face and I do think he's going to lose all of the black on his back. Sparky is <laughs> super playful as you can see but he's also probably uh, listens the best out of the whole litter. And he's going to also be the only dog in his family, um, but he's going to be living with kids, which I think is just great because he's going to get so much attention and he'll be played with a lot. Next is Zoe, and Zoe's actually not as nervous as she used to be. She's a little nervous right now because I put her on something new. And as you can see, her brindle markings are really um, becoming a lot more noticeable. Zoe's actually going to be living with her grandma and her great grandma. Zoe, I think it is time for you to get your first nail trim. What do you think of that? It's not as scary as it sounds, I promise. Next up is Darcy, and Darcy is the black and white male. His ears have gotten so big, and he's going to be going home with Ella. So I'm really happy about that because I think that this dog would be so lonely without his siblings. And here is Ella. Ella and Darcy are actually going to be living on a small farm with other animals. So they're already used to that. Good girl, Ella. Oh, you're so pretty. And here we have Daisy. Uh, Daisy is probably the bravest puppy in the litter. Daisy is the blue merle that I'm keeping. These clips are going to be pretty short because I am having trouble keeping their attention. Except I think Daisy found an old chicken poop. <laughs> Um, but she has really, really pretty markings. See, there's her ears. Good girl, Daisy. Good girl. Good girl. And lastly, we have Thor, who's one of the biggest puppies in the litter. And is eating whatever Daisy left over. Thor has the biggest ears. Uh, they actually took the longest to come up because they're just so big. <laughs> this is how I try to get them tired out. making them run through the sand. Daisy! Sparky! Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe.